Hey, hello. I want to plead that you watch this video till the end. If you don't watch till the end, you will misunderstand what I am talking about in this video. Thank you and God bless you. All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the End Time Truth Television channel. We urge you to subscribe to the channel, activate the bell icon by selecting all so that the next time we upload a new video, you will be among the first persons to be notified by Google. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Till then, Shalom. Um, many of you, majority of you, will claim that this man is teaching law. Because in, in today's world, um, the truth is no longer popular from the pulpit. Entertainment has taken over. So when people see um, a teacher of the word, a preacher of the word, who is so raw and you know, not compromising about what he, th he thinks the values should be of Christians. The next thing you will hear is that we are not under law, we are under grace. As if grace is a license to uh, promiscuity. As if grace is a license to doing whatever you like, carelessness, you know, living your life the way you want. And when you want to tell the people that Je when Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. That means, do you know what a yoke is? I'll be seeing you. I'll be seeing you. Watch and listen to this man. Not so many Christians would want to hear this. But please do hear him. We're we'll seeing you at the end of the video. God bless you here. Okay. I got a little note here. And so this morning when I made it, I couldn't figure out if it was the Lord or Loran. So in the first service, I acted on the note. You decide if it's the Lord or Loran. I want to talk to the men for just a second. Men, when I talk about temptation, you know what one of the greatest temptations is, and it's her. You can't walk out of this building you can't go anywhere in public and not see flesh, nudity, uh, seductresses, dressing to appeal, dressing to look good. You know what I'm talking about. And short and low. And here are men who want to live right. Men that want to be holy. They got nowhere to turn because in a 360 degree circle, it's everywhere. But the problem is, is that they have to see it in church. No man ought to have to fight that in church. No man ought to have to fight that in church. Ladies, girls, when you get up to get dressed to come to church, you need to realize you're coming to the holy house of God. Ladies, girls, when you get up to get dressed to come to church, you need to realize you're coming to the holy house of God. You ought not to come here to show off, wait, your legs, and if you're constantly having to fight to stay decent, you got the wrong wardrobe on. And not just for church, but for anywhere else. Now, I am not mad. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. You ought not to come here to show off, wait, your legs. And if you're constantly having to fight to stay decent, you got the wrong wardrobe on. And not just for church, but for anywhere else. Now, I am not mad. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. You need to change wardrobes. This is not a place to find a date. This is not a place to find a new husband. This is a place where you come in and the Spirit of God fills it and Jesus is here and His holiness is here and you ought not to be the cause for a man having to fight his flesh in a service.
Well, pastor, what about the men? I've had no complaints about a man whose britches legs were too short. Here's another one. But pastor, that's our culture. Now hear me. When you get saved, you change cultures. Here's another one. But pastor, that's our culture. Now hear me. When you get saved, you change cultures. I don't care what you call it. French, Russian, Romanian, I don't care what it is. When you get saved, you become a Christian and you conduct yourself as a Christian and you dress modestly for the glory of God everywhere you go. I don't care what you call it. French, Russian, Romanian, I don't care what it is. When you get saved, you become a Christian and you conduct yourself as a Christian and you dress modestly for the glory of God everywhere you go. So, as I was saying, when the Lord said, take my yoke upon you, learn of me, for I am, low, I am meek and lowly in heart. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, if you do this, if you take my yoke unto yourself, you will find the rest unto your soul. Now, yoke, a yoke, when an animal is yoked, that animal is hindered. He cannot go to wherever he pleases or it pleases. For instance, you know, in those days, in the olden time when animals used to be yoked, you know, um, sometimes, you know, even today when in places where they use, you know, or oxen for, for farm work, they have to yoke two, uh, two equal sized um, you know, ox together. And as long as they are yoked together, the truth is that one cannot go wherever he pleases. That yoke controls them. Now, but that is, you know, it might, it might sound alien to some of us. Now, but in those days that you used to have, you know, when there is a fence in Africa here, when there is a fence, there used to be an opening, a small opening, a hole drilled in the fence where some of the animals can go through and go and, f you know, and fetch food for themselves. Now, if there is any animal, any domestic animal you don't want to go out, what you do if it is a goat, you bring a stick and put here, put it here, put another one here and tie it, you know, that way. Now, when the goat wants to go through that hole, the head will go through, but because of the yoke, it cannot go through. So the yoke, the, the yoke makes it that the goat will stay within that environment you want it to stay. That is the work of a yoke here. And the Lord Jesus here is saying, take my yoke upon you. He started by inviting you by saying, come all you that labor and are heavy laden. That means that there was a burden upon you that is a yoke. And this yoke is heavier. This yoke is, is wicked in nature. This yoke is the yoke of the wicked one. And that was the yoke of sin. Even though that at that point in time, you thought you were enjoying life, living, you know, all, in, in all kinds of sin, sexual immorality, drunkenness, you know, partying and uh, all kinds of recklessness, you know, and that to you was life. But, you know, now that you have, you have found the truth in Christ Jesus, the Bible says those things, we are ashamed of it now. Now, so the Lord Jesus calling us, calling us to take upon us his yoke, it means that we are no longer allowed to go to wherever we want to go, do whatever we want to do, there are certain restrictions. And these restrictions, that is why he said that it is easy and light. You know, because it means, you know, that if we obey these things, he said, happy are we, if you know it's happy are you, if you do them. And the other word for happy is blessed. And that is what will give you rest. That is what will give your soul rest. Now, 
John the Baptist, when the people came to him for baptism, he shided them, he rebuked them, and asked them who has asked them to run from the wrath that was about coming. And then he said, it is not enough to say we have Abraham as father. If you are repentant, produce fruit that is worthy of your claim of repentance. Now, what am I saying? What I'm saying is that it is ridiculous and very shameful that when a prostitute stands and a, 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 you know, a believer, sister, a so-called born-again sister, you know, stands, you don't know the difference between the prostitute that has not yet believed in Christ Jesus who is not born again and the so-called believer who is born again because the prostitute is dressed you know exposing her thighs and her breast and our sister uh, our so-called sister is also standing exposing her breast and her, her thighs now you know when you tell these people that this isn't proper way to dress the next thing they will tell you is that you are teaching the law you are being legalistic now how then are we supposed to know who is who? Somebody may ask me, does Christianity, you know, begin in the outward appearance? My answer to that is no. But Christianity doesn't end in your heart because if something has happened in your heart, it will reflect on the outside. So whatever has happened inwardly is supposed to be there, uh, you know, um, openly expressed and manifested. On the outward, it's like when, when a furniture maker, you know, produce something from the inside. Now, when they showcase it outside, it's actually the, the, the reflection of what was done in the workshop. Now, your heart is the workshop of the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost has come upon your heart and has dealt with you and has converted you, then you've got to understand that there are some certain things you were doing in the past that you're not supposed to do any longer, you know, and that is it. Now, if you are saved, and you are still, you, nothing has changed in you, then you are not saved because if a change has happened, if you're saved, a change must have taken place in you and if that change is not reflective on the outside, then something is wrong. Something definitely is wrong. Sometimes I ask people, when you say you make up, you're making up, that means that you're telling God that he didn't made, make you perfect. Whereas the Bible said that, you know, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, O God. And when the Lord finished his, his, you know, his work, he looked at everything that he has created, including human, and he said that all things he made were very very good and that is why you know he took extra extra effort in making man and did not name man any other thing but he named man human being you are a being that is humanistic in nature you are not an animal being you are a human being that means that god is satisfied the day he created you he was okay with the way he made you and sometimes you see so-called believers they fix eyes and they're looking like pussycat you know sometimes they look like Wishes, you know, that fly by night because of the kind of things that they have, um, you know, used to adorn themselves. I know some of you will not like what I'm saying, but it doesn't matter. I know some of you are even my friends. But then, you know, the truth is that if you are not dressing decently, it is a sign that nothing has happened in you. And your pastor may be telling you it doesn't matter. Your pastor is an agent of the devil. If he tells you to dress anyhow you want to dress, that God doesn't care about how you look. Hey, that is not true. Did you hear that man? You know, that how come that people who came to church, you know, will also begin to struggle, you know, to fight with their flesh just because you entered the church. Now you become an agent of pollution. The Bible talked about Noah, that that righteous man vexed his soul because of the sin around him. Now, it is the same thing in the world. Now, but we, we are supposed to at least enjoy some kind of liberty and freedom that, you know, you are the heart of your fellow Christian is not polluted because he came into the church where he's supposed to relax and worship God is also beginning to fight against the thing that you have displayed. Some some hypocrites will say that is because you have the spirit, they have the spirit of lust. That that is why you know the brother is being affected. No, it's not that he had the spirit of lust. Remember, Jesus said that woe to that person through whom one of this one that believed in him should, you know, uh, stumble and fall. You might be actually preparing a bed for yourself in hellfire. You wouldn't know what damage you have done. You have caused in the lives and in the heart of so many people. God bless you. I'd like you to share this video if you like it. 
like it too if you do if you truly do and you know I, I just don't have to go on because I really want it to be short God bless you I love this guy I love this man you know few are the preachers of today that preach like this you know so so happy that we still have some voices that are proclaiming the truth of the gospel God bless you till I come your way again in the next video from me to you Shalom <laughs>